joining us for a nice intimate conversation here on the topic of audience-based marketing. I'm Aaron Goldman, Chief Marketer Officer at 4C. We're going to do some introductions here down the line and uh, hit into our topic. We're going from experimentation to mastery. By the end of this, we'll all walk out of here masters and we can carry on for the rest of the festival and spread our mastery across the land. Um, so let's, I'm going to, this this will be one, I'm not worried about most of you guys uh, speaking up here on the panel. I'm sure this will be a very casual conversation, uh, but I do plan to keep you on your toes by sometimes starting with you, Chris, sometimes throwing it down to Bill at the end, mixing it up in the middle with Jeff and Matt. But uh, for intros, let me throw it all the way down to Mr. Wise, who's uh, got the fresh eggs. Um, yes. Quick introductions and uh, maybe just, you know, your one so far biggest takeaway from the week. Hello. Oh, it works. Hi, uh, Bill Wise, Capricorn, uh, CEO of MediaOcean. Um, and, you know, really, that, I mean, even though this is like late in the week, I think it's a, a good topic. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Um, and, you know, I think my biggest takeaway from the week, um, you know, is two things. One, that blockchain is really sexy. I'm changing my name to Billy Blockchain. Your market valuation just went up. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you want to acquire us, it's now two billion dollars. <laughs> um, and uh, and and that relationships still matter, right? In in a world where it's driven by technology and data, um, your network and relationships really, really matter. All right, Jeff. Uh, that's been, uh, that's great. That relationships uh, are probably why my voice is so hoarse because I was relating to people on on an iHeart boat until late last night. But anyway, uh, uh, I'm Jeff Ratner. I'm Chief Media Officer uh, at uh, iCrossing. Thanks for joining us up here. Um, you know, I think beyond that, you know, some of the things I learned is I'm still waiting for the technology to disappear. You know, you th think about the uh, the evolution of most technologies, and you you, um, you know you, you've got the, the spaghettis of wires behind the VCR and the blinking twelves, and eventually the technology gets smarter and it's one wire and programs itself and things like that. Uh, that certainly hasn't happened in this. We're still very much worried about uh, the how, and maybe a little less uh, than we should be about the, the, the why and the, the what. Um, I think there was a push this year to make the creative and the product more front and center, and obviously, you know, it, it, it still isn't. Uh, you know, I think far more time, or less time was spent in the Palais looking at the work, and, and more time, you know, hearing and, and, and getting wrapped up in the tech. So at some point in time, maybe there'll be that switch. All right, uh, Matt Spiegel, Managing Director at MediaLink. Um, and I guess you know one of the things that I've, I've noticed this week is a lot of conversation on return to big media. Um, obviously, a lot of macro news that's going on this week. You know, obviously the Comcast and Disney fight for Fox, chief among them. Uh, but I think it's just an indicative of where we are as an industry, and that the big players are starting to shake out a lot of the the noise of uh, probably the last 10 years of innovation and um, I think we're, we're seeing a flight back to quality is one way to think about it but certainly a, a little bit about what's old is new again while marrying all the new stuff to the big old players is pretty interesting to see what's going to happen. So um, Chris before you guys want to give Bill a chance to disagree with Matt on that any of those already? Points? Already? <laughs> really? You, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him have that one. <laughs> Just one. We uh, for those uh, it, who, who may not know Bill uh, or Matt, they certainly know each other. And Bill, uh, as part of our panel prep, uh, committed to disagreeing with every single thing Matt says today. So I can't, I can't disagree with this intro. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, it's not who you are. Place better when you don't talk about Matt. <laughs> you are John. Over to you, Chris. Uh, so my name is Chris Jesbro, uh, currently independent, but uh, formerly of L'Oreal and OMD. Uh, and this is actually my first morning of Cannes, so my, my takeaway is that it's beautiful outside. <laughs> you got some catching up to do, my friend. Yeah, exactly. Um, so as, as the backdrop uh, for this session, uh, we partnered with iCrossing, uh, worked with Advertiser Perceptions to release some research. Uh, you've got lovely little postcards with some of the key findings on your seats there. But I want to rattle off a couple of these stats and then get your reaction to it. Are these things that surprise you? Are we just confirming through data what we kind of already knew? And then what are the imperatives? What does this tell us? What do we need to do differently? What do all the people out there not need to start doing differently in light of the fact that the trends are moving in this direction? Um, so specifically, the kind of the three things that jumped off the paper, 
Um, we surveyed 300 marketers in the US and the UK. Oh, we should do like the family feud. <laughs> and the top five are on the board. Um, so uh, one of the key takeaways, 89% of the marketers we surveyed believe building strategies around audiences creates more impactful campaigns. 88% uh, expect audience-based campaigns and budgets to surge, and 85% say audience-based marketing requires seamless operation between publishers, platforms, digital, and TV. So against this uh, concept of moving from more of a, a channel-based communications approach to really thinking about the audience uh, orchestration across all of your uh, tactics and, and strategies, um, do does, does that surprise any of you that, that, that we're moving in this direction, and um, and why, if so, and if not, why also? And then what, what, what's the imperative then? What, uh, how, how do marketers need to start thinking differently uh, or keep doing more of the same of, of uh, how they've been approaching this? Jeff, you want to go first? You were quoted in the paper, actually. Uh, I should have just read your quote exactly. in case you don't remember what you said. <laughs> what did I say? Um, yeah, no, look, I, I think that's, that's amazingly important, and it is an interesting pendulum as we've moved from context-based marketing, you know, I want to be, you know, in, in your industry, in, in the right part of the magazine, next to the right edit, and context was critical, and we've swung all the way to the where is less important than the who. Um, and in certain cases, I think maybe we've gotten uh, more, more into the, 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 the who, and it's, it is 100% about the audience, and I think somewhere along the line, it's gonna have to swing back to the where, the what, and the who are all equally important. So context and audience is, is important. And then I think it's also forcing marketers to uh, think differently about how they um, uh, classify their, their, their customers, how they build their audiences. And so we've moved away from the, you know, Women 2554 kind of TV buying demo to more prescribed. Um, and I think just because you can layer on the data, um, the, the question is how fine of a point do you need to put on your audience? Um, do you really understand your audience as well as, as you think about? Um, I, you know, some, some it's where my, my quote was uh, uh, quoted. Y you start thinking about um, uh, millionaires that shop at Brooks Brothers and, and you know, the millennials that work in our office. I'm sorry, millionaires that shop at Walmart and the millennials that are have you know more expensive wardrobes than, than I do because all of their disposable income goes into their clothing. So if you were targeting based on demo, age, income, things like that, you totally miss the mark. So understanding the audience is important, layering context onto audiences is also going to be incredibly important. Any, any follow-up thoughts or maybe Bill can chime in on the piece? Um, Related to you know, media ocean, uh, 140 billion dollars, right, flowing through uh, your pipes. And do you, how how far are we on the trajectory of moving towards what Jeff's talking about, through more audience-based approach versus kind of the traditional siloed approach? Do you see that transition happening? Yeah, you know, I mean, we've we've been seeing the trend, the the people wanting to transition. Uh, organizations are are actually holding the industry back, right? I think. You know, particularly many ad agency organizations are still very siloed. So, um, you know, I was, I was very excited to disagree with you about the, the, the who, but then you followed it up with, but it has to be, you know, it's, it's context plus audience. Uh, because, you know, at, at the end of it, you can reach the same person. Um, that same person is not the same, is, is not of the same value by media type. And that's what we're seeing. So, um, so while there's a there's a push to audience, it, it has to be contextualized that audience, um, and and I think I think companies are doing a better job at measuring. Um, so my 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 thoughts on convergence and how it affects buying has has kind of changed um, over the last couple of years, where I thought convergence was a, a buying problem, um, and it's really not. It's a planning and measurement problem. Um, so if you can plan audience, you know, buying audiences, and you can measure the efficacy of those buys, then how you execute the buys doesn't matter. And, and, and in thinking through imperatives of market, the measurement piece, clearly important, and clearly now with your new uh, self-titled rapper name, Billy Blockchain, my guess is you, you believe that can be one of the approaches that can help bring the transparency that's, that's needed to this. The actual name is hashtag Billy Blockchain. Um, the, so you know we, we, we don't get into the measurement business. Um, I think we'll end up partnering with with companies like 4C um, on and others on that. Um, 
But yeah, I think I think, I think the data will be there. Uh, Chris, from a brand perspective, in, in thinking around how you organize teams, partners, processes to take advantage of the opportunity that we now have, being able to use this you know data portably across channels, find your audiences where they are. What are the, the, some of the key things that uh, the brand marketers need to be thinking about to, uh, to to leverage the opportunity? I think it's really important that this gets integrated much further up the funnel um, into the actual product development cycle. Uh, so if you make it just about a media equation, you make it just about a, a marketing plan equation, you're always going to be missing a certain part of that. So um, pushing marketers and organizing teams to integrate that same level of audience data into which products you're creating, uh, which, which ways you're, you're planning to position those products, I think is, is a really, really important thing because then it links the full cycle from the actual creation to the execution to the, to the measurements. So you're able to get a more full loop. Good answer, good answer. Number one answer. I thought we were doing we family food stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's one of those, and, and you know, working for a global organization, um, you, know, you know as well as anybody, that to go from that concept to then the execution down the line and making sure that everyone understands and, and information is shared uh, is, is certainly challenging. Matt, you, you work with some really large global marketers. Uh, how, how, do, how do you create a framework for everybody in and on down the line so that these insights are, are not just used, you know, as Chris said, for, for media targeting, but for product development, insights that, that can impact throughout the enterprise? Yeah, well, I think this, the thing we see most often is that the hardest part is to choose what you want to do first um, because there is no shortage of opportunities. Again, I think what's surprising about your stats actually is that there wasn't 100% of folks that realized they want to do more with audience data, whatever that means. Um, need to find those 11% and just shake them. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll send I'll, you a list after. I'll leave that there. Um, <laughs> They're down at the Pinterest booth. <laughs> Not sure what that means either. So. <laughs> we'll just keep going. On the beach. Not the beach. Out. Uh, so you know, listen. I think we, we spend a lot of time telling marketers figure out the use cases first. What, what are you going to move? How are you going to move the business forward? There got to be some metrics of success in the short term. Um, but we also talk a lot about the fact that uh, if you don't paint a picture for what your future state is supposed to look like, and I don't think enough organizations uh, spend as much time as they need to uh, looking at, at stating how they see the future a couple years from now. How, how will their organization be different? What new talent will they have in? How will they work with their partners? What technology will they leverage? And then as a result, you know, how will we act differently than we do today? Um, and so I think that's a miss because I think you probably have a lot of people in a lot of these organizations that want the change, um, but they don't really have a clear picture of the change they're supposed to be doing and there's so many options. And so I think we find ourselves uh, paralyzed in a lot of cases. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, sometimes just picking a place to start and actually starting is the most important thing. You know, if you're waiting for end state, we'll be back here, you know, in 10 years with um, less hair. Well, some, um, some are already there. Um, but to, but talking about the same thing. It's not wrong. I actually heard Goldman, he was like, let's put the bald guy in the middle. Yeah, right, right. Isaac is a great hairdo I have. I'm pretty confident about that. Well, and, and you know, thankfully we've got some protection uh, we do. from the sun. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> Jeff. Um, you know, from coming from an eye crossing perspective and thinking about you know an integrated approach, right? Um, I know one of the things that you guys hold near and dear, and that we can't let get lost in this process is the creative. We can do all the best audience discovery, comms planning, media channel planning, you know, find that exact right person at the right time, but if it ain't the right message, the whole thing gets wasted. So, so talk about uh, you know the role of, of creative and, and when you move from a sort of channel based approach to audience based approach, what are some of the key things you need to be thinking about there? Well, you know, there's a couple of things. One, you know, uh, as points made, starting with the macro business goal. What, what, what do you want this marketing to do for you? And um, what's happened, I think, a lot in the siloed approach to things is you've compartmentalized everything. Here's my search KPI. Here is my social KPI. Here is my display. And then here's my creative and make it work across all of those things. And, and the reality is, um, one, you've got to think about the the, the right creative for each of those channels and, and what's going to work in uh, a social channel versus what's going to work in a display channel might be totally different. Um, but then unifying against a singular metric that is a business goal. So, so some of the things that we're doing uh, at iCrossing is, is this concept called total performance, which is optimizing against a business goal. So um, starting with, uh, and that could be a sales goal, it could be a growth goal, it could be an awareness goal. 
um, but seeing then how the individual metrics across search, social, ladder up into that goal and being able to optimize across and then making sure that we're matching the right creative type and content to, uh, to each of those channels and, and uh, the goals uh, therein. Here's the thing though. I, I, well, I, well, I agree that uh, the ideal state, you have to have personalized creative, again, no, no doubt about it. Well, may not suggest otherwise. But I think then there is a misnomer that says until you get all the creative right, you shouldn't use other forms of precision data. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, you know, listen, targeting and uh, limiting waste or finding the right audiences to reach, even if the message is not perfect, will provide you some value. Um, I think the good news is the industry's talked about that for the last eight to ten years, and so we're now finally talking about the storytelling side of it, which is, again, quite clearly needed. Um, but but I, I think the waiting for it to be perfect is actually what's causing some of the problem. Like, just go do some stuff, learn, and you'll make better creative along the way. I would agree completely. Uh, sometimes it just helps to put something into the market to understand how it's performing before you uh, uh, before you start iterating. Yeah, it is interesting, you know, against the backdrop of the can you know, line International Festival of Creativity, um, we've gone, you know, we talk about sort of the pendulum swinging back and forth, and um, you get to a point where you can be so innovative with you know, your data and your apertures and, and where you find these opportunities to, to reach the consumers, and then you, you know, at the other end, you've got people just you know, doing award-winning creative for creative sake, and, and the beauty, of course, is somewhere in the middle. And you know, meanwhile, down the cross set, you have IBM and, and Watson, you know, out there saying, "Hey, you know, artificial intelligence can will be able to figure out exactly what that right combination of color, headline, you know, person in the ad is going to be." And again, that's one of those where if we, if we wait for that outcome, um, we'll, we'll still be here. And, after, lines. after uh, one too many rosés, I was uh, with with the Watson team, and you know IBM has missed like something like you know twenty three quarters in a row of earnings, and I said, hey, can't Watson predict your earnings? <laughs> like if it's so good, like maybe you won't miss. <laughs> um, as we are uh, in an uh, intimate setting here, I'd love if anyone in the audience has any burning questions, anything you guys want to throw out, by all means, uh, just shout it out. Very. In, in the spirit of transparency, um, we're all here to, to talk about whatever's interesting to you. So um, throw up your hand, and otherwise, we'll just keep going. Um, one, did you? Was that a, a, a sneeze? It, it was a half. Okay, great. Yeah, Go for it. Was it. A half <laughs> raise. I wasn't quite sure. Um, Chris, uh, I was wondering, uh, just your view, having been you know deeply involved in the client side for um, quite a while. What, what's your take on this topic, which is, you know, uh, obviously audience-based? What does that mean to you, really? And what are the, what should we be doing more of and what should we be doing less of? So from, from my perspective, it goes back to the, the point I was starting to make earlier about integrating things very far up into the, into the funnel. Um, when I first started my career, I started in media and then I moved to the client side and moved less from media and more towards a marketing type of role. And the further I've gotten away from the actual media execution, the media plan execution, the more I realize that the disconnect is between the, 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 the initiation of marketing and then the execution of the actual plan to support that, that marketing objective, that business objective. So um, a lot of things are still done by, by feeling. Um, a lot of things are still done by, by gut intu uh, intuition. Um, and there's data to justify that gut intuition, but not necessarily integrated far enough up into the decision-making process to say, this is the right type of product, this is the right color of the cap, that type of thing, versus what I think is beautiful or what I think is, uh, is pretty. So um, for me, the, the, the way that it's going to be truly, truly disruptive is an organization takes it very, very far up the funnel and says, okay, these are the five different options I have for product development. This is the decision I'm making based on which audience is going to be, which product is going to be relevant for which uh, for which type of audience. And I think it's very important that a marketer not be reliant on solely external data sets to be able to make those decisions. Um, the, the the building of your own your own data lake, your own data set internally to be able to evaluate those decisions, I think is very important. I, I had to check. I'm, I'm wearing the, the blue blockers, the yeah. original, and, and I was checking the color cap. It actually, looks gray. <laughs> For me, but then I realized you maybe just only perfectly maybe, illustrated my point. <laughs> maybe we'll even have to close with the, the blue blocker wrap. If anyone remembers those local TV spots, I know uh, Jason will help me out with that one. Um, so we got about five minutes left. I want to move into a little bit of a lightning round. We did not rehearse this. I told you guys I'd keep you on your toes. 
Um, our CEO, Lance Newhouser, just launched a podcast. It's called The Squeeze. That's a very not subtle plug. Uh, but he does a lightning round at the end with his guests. It's always a lot of fun. So uh, let's try it here. Uh, let's start with hashtag Billy Blockchain. Most overrated thing uh, here at Can. Uh, blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to your press release the other day. <laughs> All right. Jeff, most underrated. Blockchain? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> blockchain is just, it solves everything. Everywhere. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think it, 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 there is something to that that's stupid irony. It, it, it's either overhyped or underhyped, and I think the fact is we're just not really sure. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll, talk after. we'll talk after. Uh, Matt, favorite uh, either musical performance or celeb sighting this week? Uh, that's a great question. Well, I was with what Ross from Friends last night. Huh? See that he has not aged well. Really? <laughs> he was so weathered. I was so disappointed. I wanted, I sent the picture to my daughters, and, and they were like, Dad, you actually look better than Ross from Friends. Wow. Nice. So, nice. Uh, what is he doing It's here? the best compliment I've gotten. Well, I, what is he hyping here? I have no idea. He's here for the rosé. Yeah. No, no one told him life was going to be this uh, way. Does Kelly, uh, Wal Kelly Wal Jennings, Walsh, Kelly Walsh Jennings? Yeah. Carrie Walsh. Yeah. Carrie Walsh. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. That was, that, she's not bad. That, yeah. was, that was a cool sighting. Yeah. Throwing Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, you saw Shaq. Shaq was a good one. Cool. Oh, oh I saw Jimmy Johnson too. That was pretty cool. That's a really good yeah, one. Football coach, Cowboys? not driver. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Less cool now. Uh, yeah, that was a football okay. coach. <laughs> uh, Chris, um, we're here next year. Same setting. Lovely weather. Uh, what do you think we're going to be talking about? What do you think the, the biggest topic will be? Crystal ball. He gets the celebrity, and I get the future right. prediction. <laughs> well, you only just got it. Just, right? just, just say blockchain. Have that many yeah, guys. Yeah, blockchain. Um, no, I think somebody will actually be able to be on stage and actually explain what blockchain is. It's going to be Bill Wise. I'm looking forward to that. That might be the mic drop moment right there. Uh, well, thank you guys all for joining us here today. Thank you to the panel. I want to thank iCrossing uh, for letting us use their lovely secret garden. And uh, to everyone out there in uh, viewer land, uh, you can download the white paper that we've been referencing here, 4cinsights.com slash advertiser dash perceptions. Got it? I'm sure somebody can overlay that right on the screen, right here. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for joining me. Appreciate you sharing your insights. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.